I am Jamie Grassman, and I will uh, be serving as your worship associate today. Our senior minister, Reverend Rebecca Froome, is currently on sabbatical through August 23rd. Today, um, I'm, I'm glad that our uh, sabbatical minister, Reverend Bo Rivers, will be with us today. Our director of religious education, Joan McDonald, is also with us today. Um, uh, I extend a special welcome to those of you who are guests or are feeling new to our community. If this is one of your first times this, with us this morning and you feel comfortable, I invite you to follow the link on our website, ufpc.org, and let us, let us know how we might contact you or if you have any questions that we can answer. And thank you for joining us today. At this moment, we're going to uh, have an opening hymn. It is number one in your great hymnal if you have one at home. It is called May Nothing Evil Cross This Door. You can sing along with it at home if you, if you are um, inclined. May nothing evil cross this door and may ill fortune never pry about these windows may the roar and rain go by by faith made strong the rafters will withstand the battering of the storm this hearth At this moment, I want to invite G. Fred Shepard to light our chalice. If you have a candle at home or a chalice, you're invited to light um, your own as well. Um, and let, uh, let us listen to the words given to us by G. Fred Shepard. Good morning. The words I've chosen for our chalice lighting today have come from Nancy Reed McGee. Our community knows no boundaries. We are not confined by the physical limits of walls, or for that matter, of what often binds us, restricts us, holds us back. We are freer than we know when we release ourselves and each other from expectations of what is needed for true community. We are here, together, in space. I see you, I hear you, I love you, and I light this chalice, a beacon of this community, holding us all together here now.
Thank you, Fred. Um, let's read our covenant. You will find the words printed here. I'll read for us and you can uh, recite along with us. As a free fellowship of this historic church, we unite to lift our hearts and open our minds to a larger reality, to accept, support, and encourage one another, to seek the wisdom in all religions, to cherish and sustain the web of life, and to strive for justice, compassion, and peace. At this moment, I'd like to invite uh, Joan McDonald, our Director of Religious Education, to give us a story for all ages. Oh, he did it again. <laughs> Good morning. The story I'm going to share with you today is called The Bundle of Sticks, and it's adapted from an Aesop fable. Once there was a woman who lived on a beautiful farm in the country. From her window, she could see fields of grain, barns, farm animals, apple orchards, and forests beyond. The farm had been in her family for many generations, and she raised her large family there. Her husband had died long ago, and she was feeling her age. Although she should be happy, she worried. She worried because her kids, who were all grown up, did not get along. She heard them quarreling day and night. Does that sound familiar, anybody? Have you been arguing or fighting with somebody in your family lately? Well, the woman loved her children and her children loved working on the family farm. Some were good at planting and harvesting. Others were great at raising animals. One was a great carpenter and another skilled at cooking and preserving the food that they grew. Each thought their job was most important and that the others didn't work hard enough. They didn't, and if they didn't fight about that, they argued about things that happened long ago. The woman tried talking to her children about living in peace, but they just didn't listen and she worried that after she had, would, had died, they would not be able to keep the family farm because they couldn't get along together. One day, she had an idea. She called her children and said, I would like each of you to go into the forest and find two sticks. Bring them here tomorrow and I will explain. Her children did as she asked and they came with two sticks each. So she said, please put one of the sticks down and then take a stick and see if you can break it. Each stick broke really easy. And then she said, give me all the remaining sticks. And they handed her a pile of sticks and she held them in hand. She bundled them together and she passed the bundle back to one of the children and said, here, try and break the sticks now and each tried with all their might and they just couldn't break the stick. They passed the bundle from one to another and they all failed. You, my children, are like these sticks, she said. If you go your separate ways, quarreling and holding resentment toward one another, you each will be alone like an individual stick. The difficulties of life will easily hurt you. But if you work together and appreciate each other's strength, cherish what you have in common and care for one another, you will be strong like that bundle of sticks and nothing and life will break you. Find strength and joy in one another's company and you will live well and accomplish much. The children took their mother's lesson to heart, letting go of past grudges and focusing on what they shared in common appreciating each other's strengths and working together. The old woman died peacefully and the farm remained in the family for many years. Thank you. Thank you, Joan. 
Through the sharing of our joys and sorrows, we create a sacred space where we are deeply present with ourselves and one another. This is a time to briefly but fully share the life milestones that lift your spirits in joy and hope or the pain and loss that fills you with heartache. If you have a joy or sorrow to share, in a moment, you can raise your hand. There's also a chat function. You can raise your hand in chat. Uh, we will try and call on you by name so that we can each have a turn to share. If you are attending by phone, we will also have a moment at the end and call on you as well. At this time, turn on your camera. And uh, when we call on you, turn on your microphone. We will try to unmute you as well. When you speak, please share your name and speak directly towards the microphone so that everyone may hear you. As we begin our sharing, we light a candle of joy, knowing that a joy shared is a joy magnified. We also light a candle of sorrow, knowing that a sorrow shared is a sorrow diminished. Let us open our hearts to one another. Peter, I'm trying to unmute you. There you go. Hi, Peter. Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, <clears throat> this morning in my heart is the uh, efforts of all the healthcare workers in our state and beyond. Uh, Melissa, my wife, is working today at MGH and um, while I know that she's careful and working to keep everyone else safe, um, my heart goes out to all the employees of, of hospitals throughout this state and country, as well as worldwide, as they are on the front lines and doing the, the good work to, to try to keep us all from uh, this illness spreading more. So my heart goes out to them and I keep them in, in our prayers. Eight. Kate Hurley. Well, morning, everyone. This is Kate. Um, I have a joy to share. Um, I served on the ministerial internship committee for Ali Jablonski, and yesterday she went before the ministerial fellowship committee, and um, I attended a Zoom meeting celebrating her because she um, passed and got a one, which is like the highest score you can get, and um, I am absolutely thrilled um, to share that news. Thanks. I see Mel. Hi, um, I'm Mel. Um, so kind of similar to like what Peter was saying, um, my partner works at Mass General Hospital. Um, he works a position that takes him all over different like departments and um, it's been really difficult for him. Um, he just found out that the person that usually works over the weekend is under quarantine right now. Um, I don't know if that means that they think he might have the virus or what, um, but that means that my partner had to pick up the weekend shifts um, in addition to his regular weekly shifts, which means he's going to be working um, 12 days in a row. And um, he deals with a lot of depression. Um, one of the things that helps with his depression is dancing, and that's not something you can do right now. But um, in, in addition to working, you know, at the hospital and there being like different precautions and procedures every day, um, he's also a DJ and he's taking time that he could be taking to like rest and recoup to do live um, sets, um, streams for people that are missing out on the clubs. And so in addition to working all weekend, he spun last night and um, Friday night. And so you know, just um, if everyone could keep him and um, all the other healthcare workers. I also, I work in the mental health field, so it's been very stressful for me as well. Um, and, you know, my, my heart goes out to everyone working right now. 
Jackie or Juan? Okay, so you have to um, uh, unmute us. We hear you. Hi. Um, so I just wanted to share that um, uh, my uncle, who was, uh, turned 85 on um, last week, uh, actually passed away from the virus in New York City um, this week. And um, I think what was hard, um, he was in a nursing home. And um, I think what was really hard was not being able to uh, have anybody uh, comfort him in his last hours. Um, and uh, no one had been allowed into the nursing home for you know about a month prior to this whole thing happening. Um, so we, we're trying to do a virtual Zoom um, service for him right now, um, kind of working on that. And so it, it just hit really close to home. Um, and, uh, and so that, that was uh, actually very hard uh, this week. Um, on, um, and, and I also um, have been praying for all the nurses and doctors and uh, frontline staff um, who are putting themselves out there um, and, 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 you know, just facing this personally so close. Um, so I just wanted to share that. Um, with everyone, um, so just um, just stay safe and indoors and 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 you know uh, as safe as you can, everyone, because we we have to take care of ourselves. Um, so that that's what I wanted to share. Thank you. Okay. Isaiah's uh, got his hand up. So I uh, know that you know. A lot of people are on the direct front lines. I, I work for the Department of Mental Health. I think everybody kind of knows that. You know, I found myself kind of struggling because at times I feel like I have the strength to be able to go out and be a public servant and do my job and do what I need to do to help others. But then, of course, there's other moments where I feel like my anxiety, because I have anxiety disorder, is ready to break me and I feel like you know at moments like I just want to give up I was saying that to my fiance I'm like if it gets much worse I feel like I'm just gonna quit but I'm trying to remain strong and you know I think one of the things that was helping me originally was thinking about our wedding June 6 and now all of a sudden that's up in the air really because who knows if we are going to be able to even do that so i i just i feel like i i don't know where to find more strength but i keep praying and i keep doing what i can to try to reach into my soul and, and find that strength but i keep struggling and struggling I um, want to give a moment to people who have called in. Um, I'm not sure if um, I see a name, but um, if you are just on a phone call and want a moment to share, let us know. Speak your name. And this uh, is Jane. Oh, this is Jane. Hi. Uh, if you'd like to share, please share now. Jane, uh, yes, uh, Jane Mudge, I just wanted to tell you that I put on, when we were in the, um, like the chalice, I have a, a diffuser with, that's lighted, and, uh, and it was given to me by Sheila, if you remember the woman from India who stayed with us and joined the church for several years, she became a good friend I'd drive her to ch church on Sunday or drive her home more or less and um, she is in my mind today because I lit I put that on and also uh, I'd like to thank David Boskin for sending me a, an old notebook that uh, Rebecca found in her office when she was cleaning it out before she left and in it was several writings I had done 10 years ago and eight years ago. And one of them in particular was so very moving to me about my, when I buried my, I, I didn't bury them, my niece buried my sister's ashes and the beautiful ceremony that she had uh, devised with monarch butterflies flying above and 
how uh, remarkably she had on my sister's butterfly pin. And I had changed my shirt and worn my butterfly shirt that morning, not knowing any of this. So also, I was sorry to hear about Louise Riley. I wish I had been able to see her, but um, I'm saddened and hope her people are consoled. So that's all. Thank you. I see another caller in. Did you need to speak anything today? All right. As we end our sharing, we light a final candle. Jamie, representing you got one more, Jamie. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Brenda, Jeff. Brenda needs to talk. Oh, hi. This is Brenda Reed, and um, and on behalf of Florence Noonan, I'd like to share. Um, it's both, a, uh, I think, a joy and a concern. Uh, the joy is, is that Florence's um, heart surgery is moving forward on Friday, April 3rd. And so um, uh, so she will be inpatient for a few days, and then she will probably, she'll be in rehab for a few days after that. However, once she gets home, she will need some support from us, um, her friends, and uh, from UFPC in terms of prepared meals to drop off at her house. So I'll be emailing you with opportunities uh, for the dates of when that will happen. But um, please hold Florence, um, who welcomes cards and calls in your thoughts and prayers uh, for a successful uh, surgery and a quick recovery. Thank you. As we end our sharing, we light a final candle representing all the joys and sorrows we hold silently in our hearts. May the light of these candles and the compassion of this community remind us that whoever you, wherever you are on our journey, we each are worthy of love and we are each able to love. Let us take a deep breath together, feeling the spirit of life and love that moves within, between, and beyond us all. Let us take a deep breath together, rolling our shoulders back, feeling the ground beneath us, and appreciating the gift of this day. Let us take a deep breath together, entering into a time of shared sacred silence.
spirit of life and love. We lift up our healthcare workers and first responders who are working overtime and in high risk environments. We lift up those who are struggling with fear and anxiety in these difficult times. We also lift up those who have succumbed to the virus, especially in the absence of their loved ones. Events have been postponed. Some surgeries will take place. Everything is so uncertain. Spirit of life, we give thanks for the many blessings in our lives as well. When we step outside and see the crocuses coming up through the dead leaves, we're reminded that it's spring and that this reality we are presently living in will change at some point. Let us find hope and grace in each other. And we give our hearts in celebration for those who have achieved significant milestones in their lives and for butterflies, which like the crocuses have so much meaning when it comes to transformation. Spirit of life, whom we know best in our own loving and being loved, help us to know who we are, to see our place in the history of the earth and in the family of things. Help us to see that we are part of all that ever was. Our grandmother's prayers and our grandfather's dreamings our mother's courage and our father's hope. In our bones lies the calcium of antediluvian creatures. In our veins courses the water of the seas. We are part of all that ever was. Born of this earth, riders upon a cosmic ocean, we are not separate from nature. We are nature. Part of the same spirit that turns scales into feathers and birdsong into speech. We live by the sun and we move by the stars. We eat from the earth and we drink from the rain. Great spirit, help us know who we are and fill us with such love for this holy creation and gratitude for this awesome gift we call life that we might claim our inheritance and live out our calling to bless this world and to bless each other with our love and care. I invite us now to mute our microphones if they aren't already and join us in singing our next hymn, Spirit of Life.
Our reading this morning is by George O'Dell. We need one another when we mourn and would be comforted, when we are in trouble and afraid, when we despair and in temptation need to be recalled to our best selves again. We need one another when we would accomplish some great purpose and cannot do it alone. In the hour of our successes, when we look for someone to share our triumphs, and in the hour of our defeat, when, we, when with encouragement we might endure and rise again. All our lives we are in need, and others are in need of us. Blessed be. We drink from wells we did not dig, and we sit in the shade of trees we did not plant. As the recipient of all that we have received from those who came before us, we are called to share our abundance with those who will follow us. This congregation aspires to do life-affirming and life-transforming work, both for those of us who gather here and for the larger web of life for which we are a part. As a voluntary association, our church is sustained through the gifts of the members and friends of our congregation. Your generosity helps keep the lights on and the gardens watered. Your generosity sustains our lifespan religious education program. Your generosity supports a liberal religious voice in the greater community. <clears throat> These social distancing measures we are practicing have fundamentally changed the way we must perform our operatory. Please take this moment to visit our website at ufpc.org and consider clicking the donate bu donations button located on the home page uh, to support the good works of United First Parish Church. Let us open our hearts as these gifts are joyfully given and gratefully received. This is the kickoff of our stewardship season at UFPC. This week, Jim Potosa, chair of our stewardship committee, has a testimonial for us. Good morning, everyone. We're hoping because of limited signal that if I keep my video off, you'll be able to hear me with greater clarity. So I'm hoping that is the case. Um, I want to begin by uh, acknowledging the words of a revered late Senator Paul Wellstone, who said, there is an aspiration which undergirds the humane impulse in our history and our culture and binds us together. This is a simple, irreducible, indisputable aspiration. It is the dream of justice for a beloved community in which the level of terror in people's lives is sharply reduced or maybe eliminated. It is the belief that extremes and excesses of inequality must be reduced so that each person is free to fully develop his or her full potential. Those words seem to have incredible resonance for us today, more than 30 years after he uttered them. This idea of community echoes throughout the great social justice causes by its leaders in the late 20th century. Martin Luther King Jr., Desmond Tutu, John Lewis, among others, would seize on the idea as an aspirational target for their political work which deeply intersected with their spirituality. As a congregation, I see us working in the fields of our intersected lives as individuals caring for each other. We embrace and lift up the truth and blessing of the collective noun of our beloved community. When there is need for acceptance, 
we seek to practice a radical welcome. When there is isolation, we seek to bring companionship. When there is narrowness, we seek to widen and diversify our worlds with open hearts. When there are new challenges that can come with advanced age, we seek to provide the vitality of friendship. When there is a call for justice too long deferred, we seek to answer it. When there is pain, we seek to ease it. And when there is fear, we share what courage we have in the face of it. We do it in many ways, both large and small, but always with big hearts. We do it as best we can. And we seek to do it better. Each of us as individuals acknowledge the role we play in each other's lives. We may not always get it just right, but we try to be there for each other in the best and worst of times. We sing, we light our candles, we share our thoughts, our pain, our joy, our struggles, our dreams, and our imaginings, our faith. Our community is beloved. May it grow and prosper as we do the best we can to support its continuation. During the next five weeks, we will have a focus on stewardship as we start the pledge campaign to keep us going next year. These are not easy days, but we are here and have the opportunity to matter to each other in ways that may be new and more necessary than ever. I ask you to spend a bit of time in the coming weeks and think about the ways you lift up the beloved community we share at UFPC and what benefits you derive from it. In doing that, I hope you will consider how you can do what you can to assure its continuance as a spiritual home that benefits from your time, your efforts, and your support. I want to thank each of you for being a part of this journey. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Jim, for that lovely testimonial. Beautiful. I want to start off by saying how good it is to be with you and how good it is to be healthy, alive, and well. And I also want to acknowledge so much has changed since I was with you last. First, I was ordained on March 8th and our president, Lisa Howe, brought greetings from UFPC, and Reverend Rebecca led the laying on of hands, which is a ritual of blessing upon new ministers and their ministries. It was a deeply moving day for me. And then within a few short days after my ordination, it seems the whole world just turned upside down. Scientists realized the best way to prevent the spread of COVID-19 was to cancel everything, close our doors, and employ new strategies for communication and building community. Restaurants started staying, were able to stay open by closing their dining rooms and offering takeout service. Grocery stores are increasing their staff to provide pickup and delivery orders. Pharmacies are allowing customers to purchase items other than medication from their drive through windows. And healthcare providers are triaging patients while they remain seated in their cars. Wearing a mask to protect ourselves and others is becoming more and more commonplace. And mastering new technologies to maintain connections 
with loved ones, co-workers, and those who depend on us has become a necessity. It's a lot to take in. Especially for those who face unemployment because they cannot work from home or have a loved one who is affected by the virus or at high risk of exposure. In times of great uncertainty, it is easy to become overwhelmed by fear as we try to make sense of it all. In times like these, we need to find inner and outer peace by grounding ourselves in love. In the Buddhist tradition, the path to inner and outer peace is achieved through the cultivation of loving kindness for ourselves, our loved ones, our acquaintances, and even those who may irritate or challenge us until our sense of loving kindness extends out into the community to people we may not even know. The loving kindness meditation is the softening of the mind and the heart, an opening to deeper levels of kindness that enables us to experience pure love. If you think you might like to experience a guided loving kindness meditation, I invite you to find a posture that helps you remain relaxed and alert. And when you are ready, we begin by taking, by slowly taking in two or three deep breaths. And with each long, slow exhalation, releasing the preoccupations of the mind and settling your awareness in the breath as it moves through the region of your heart. And when you are ready, you might bring to mind the image of someone who loves and cares about you very much. Someone who easily evokes feelings of warmth and love. Someone who helps you feel safe and whole. And if a person past or present doesn't come to mind. Maybe there's someone in your life who inspires you. And if it feels right, imagine saying to them, may you be happy, healthy, and whole. May you have love, warmth, and affection. May you be protected from harm and free from fear. And may you experience inner peace and ease. Noticing how it feels as these wishes emanate from your heart out to the one who loves or inspires you. And when you're ready, See if you can imagine them wishing you the same, knowing they have your well being in their heart. Imagine them saying to you, May you be happy, healthy, and whole. May you have love, warmth, and affection. And may you be protected from harm and free from fear. May you experience inner peace and ease. Letting those feelings wash over you, feeling their unconditional love and caring for you allowing the feelings of love and safety to grow in you, knowing there is nothing you have to do
to deserve these feelings and wishes. They are given freely and without condition. Even if you might not feel all the safety and warmth right now, knowing that it is their wish for you, see if you can have these wishes for yourself by saying, may I be happy, healthy, and whole. May I have love, warmth, and affection. May I be protected from harm and free of fear. And may I experience inner peace and ease. And if it feels right, perhaps you would like to extend these wishes to someone you love and care about by saying to them, May you be happy, healthy, and whole. May you have love, warmth, and affection. May you be protected from harm and free from fear. And may you experience inner peace and ease. And if it feels right, perhaps there are acquaintances in your life to whom you can imagine saying, may you be happy, healthy, and whole. May you have love, warmth, and affection. May you be protected from harm and free from fear. May you experience inner peace and ease. And even if these wishes aren't infused with the same warmth and love as they were for a loved one, see if you can extend the wish to someone who frustrates you by remembering, just like me, they want to feel happiness and joy, just like me, they want peace and ease. And just like me, they want to be loved and to know their loved ones are safe and healthy. And so if it feels possible, imagine saying to them, may you be happy, healthy, and whole. May you have love, warmth, and affection. May you be protected from harm and free from fear. May you experience inner peace and ease. And if it's possible, you might continue to expand the circle to include people you may not even know. People in the larger community, in other countries and other cultures by saying, may we all be happy, healthy, and whole. May we all have love, warmth, and affection. May we all be protected from harm and free from fear. And may we all experience inner peace and ease. And as we bring our loving kindness this meditation to an end, may we realize its full potential in our lives. And when you are ready, I invite you to gently come back to this room with soft eyes. This loving kindness meditation reminds us that it is love that binds us together like a bundle of sticks and makes us stronger. And it is our covenant with one another and how we pledge our time, talent, and treasure that ensures the farm we affectionately call United First Parish Church 
will remain in our spiritual family for many generations to come. May it be so. I invite us now to join in singing our closing hymn, number 131 in the gray hymnal, Love Will Guide Us. Here at United First Parish Church, we gather in many ways for spiritual growth, to nourish connection, to put our faith into action, and to participate in the life and leadership of our congregation. You can read about uh, upcoming and ongoing programs in our weekly announcements. They are shortened because of the times we're in. But if you're not on our emailing list, you can contact us again at uh, ufpc.org. And we will make sure to add you to our mailing list and so that we can all remain connected. I want to remind everybody that uh, on Wednesday, April 1st at 7.30 p.m., we will gather online to share memories and our feelings for Louise Riley. If you need information on how to get um, in touch for this, contest, contact us again at a website and we will make sure you have a link. Also next week, Reverend Sheldon Bennett, our um, minister emeritus, will be uh, giving his first sermon back with our church since his retirement. His sermon is entitled, Liberation in the Time of Contagion. We will uh, all gather for that. Um, we are gonna break up um, after our benediction and go to a um, coffee hour, virtual coffee hour with everybody. And uh, we hope you'll join us then. It'll be open mic, everybody can talk. We'll, uh, we'll enjoy our company together. Mocking us. With faith to face our challenges, with love that casts out fear, with hope to trust tomorrow, we accept this day as the gift it is, a reason for rejoicing.
as we extinguish the flame of our chalice, may each of us carry its light into every day of our lives. Blessed be.